Hey there, I hope you're doing well. I'm Lori Miller and I pastor at three little United Methodist churches. And um, what God's laid on my heart today for us to do is to uh, practice our prayer. There's been a lot that's gone on this week that's been out of everybody's control uh, except for God's. And, uh, you know, these things weigh heavy on your heart. Uh, just to share a little story with you, there was a, uh, a bull elk in uh, one of the, the western states, and he got a big tire, uh, a, a trash tire, caught around his head, and he couldn't get it off. And as he grew, his antlers grew, and he really couldn't get it off then. And they were able to track him. <clears throat> For two years, this bull elk walked around with this tire. Uh, he was just dragging all that weight around with him. And I, I don't know how heavy it was, but I don't want a rubber tire around my neck for any amount of time. Uh, they were finally able to tranquilize him and remove the tire from him and then re release him into the wild. And he was fine, but for two years, he ran around with that. And uh, that weight he did not need. And I, I've been thinking this week... I, I, and probably you, have run around a lot with uh, these, these things in our minds that are just dragging us down when we need to just leave them in God's hands. So to do that, today we're going to practice our prayer. Now, uh, while the Lord's Prayer is the perfect prayer, uh, what we're going to do today is, is modeled on it. If you compare the two, you'll see the Lord's Prayer in action. We're just going to expand on it a little bit. So what you will need today is a, a little piece of paper or a card. I have an index card, uh, but you will need a little card to write on. And uh, before I get started on that, so we can get rid of these tires around our neck, I do want to share a verse with you in Romans. This is some of my favorite verses, Romans 8. Uh, verses 26 through 27. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So before I get into our our several prayers that we're going to do today. Uh, I want to open with a prayer and uh, bow with me. Our Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory. We ask that you fill us with your Holy Spirit so that when we don't know the right words, your Spirit will understand. Your Spirit will speak for us. Uh, we give you thanks for always answering our prayers, maybe not in the way we think is best, but we trust you to know what really is best. So we thank you for answering our prayers. Again, just fill us with your Holy Spirit and lead us in praying more deeply. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we've asked the Holy Spirit to come in because if you're like me, I'm not always comfortable praying in public. I'm not always pr comfortable praying privately because I don't know what to ask for. I think I know what's best. But uh, don't tell my husband this, but I don't always know what's best. Uh, but God does. And that's why I love these verses. He will speak for us when we can't speak or don't know what to say. So this is what we're going to work on today is strengthening our prayer and strengthening it together. So hopefully you have your little card. And on that card, uh, I want you to write... The letter A, and there are several acronyms we can use. I'm using an A. And this is for uh, adoration. The first thing we need to do when we pray, uh, this may be backwards. Yes, it's backwards for you. Adoration, uh, when we pray, is give God the adoration he deserves. Now, exactly what does that mean? Well, it's just worshiping him and adoring him. So take a minute and think of some words that describe God and write them by adoration. You can use your Bible if you need to.
Okay. That's been just a minute or so. <clears throat> I wrote down several words. Yours don't have to be the same. There's no wrong answer here. Uh, some of the words I wrote, wrote and some that other people have shared for me. Uh, God is love. He's patient. He's just. Awesome. Mighty. Powerful. Forgiving. Healing. Tender. Intelligent. We could go on and on. <clears throat> I never really, in my prayers, give God enough adoration. I skip over that part and go to my, my, my grocery list, so to speak. But this should be the first thing we do is offer him adoration. So right now, uh, there is a Bible verse about adoration. And that is Nehemiah 9.32. See what it says about adoration. Nehemiah 9.32 Now therefore our God, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love, let not all the hardship seem little to you that has come upon us, upon our kings, our princes, our priests, our prophets, our fathers, and all your people, since the time of the kings of Assyria until this day. These verses call him great, mighty, awesome, one who keeps covenants, one who has steadfast love. And we could go on and on, but we are to adore him always. So let's say a prayer of adoration. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, this, this prayer is simply to adore you. You are perfect. You are loving and kind and powerful you heal us you forgive us you are just you are wise you are caring you are faithful and lord we adore you for being all of those things and so many more we adore you for being yahweh in jesus name we pray amen a prayer of adoration a simple thing but we don't always do that. There's another letter we need in our prayers, and that's the letter C. I don't like this one very much because it stands for confession. None of us like to admit we've done something wrong, and yet in our prayers we are to confess our sins. We are to confess them to God and sometimes to each other, and that's even harder to do. And yet we are uh, supposed to. Let's see what Acts 3.19 has to say about prayers of confession. Acts 3.19 Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Repent be refreshed. I don't know about you, but I need to be refreshed. And I can only do that if I confess what I've done wrong. Now, I will admit to y'all, I'll go, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Take a minute and on your card, where you've written C for confession, write a few things that you need to confess to God. And I don't care how good you are, you have sinned. I have sinned. We all have. So let's go ahead and confess them to God. Right down. I'll give you just one minute here. Okay, that may be a minute, may not. Close to it. <clears throat> now I wrote down several things. And, uh, okay. He's going to take a nap. He does this every time he gets a chance. He's going to take a nap. Um, 
and I don't mind that, but let me tell y'all, here's the one I'm going to confess. I got so mad at him. That was my husband, Johnny. I got so mad at him last night. Um, I haven't felt well this week. I think it's the diverticulitis that's flared up, so I wanted some soup. I sent him to the store to buy some soup and some dog food, and he had a list of about five things to get. No sugar was on the list. Nothing with sugar, because he's a type 2 diabetic. Okay. He gets back from the store, and um, he unloads the bags. He says, I don't know why I did this. I said, what? And uh, if you're on my Facebook, you'll see the video of what he brought home. He brought home uh, a gallon of chocolate milk and a gallon of orange juice. Uh, he brought home a big pack of cookies. He brought home... Uh, a can of spray cheese I don't know why he brought home <laughs> he did get the soup he did get the soup I'll say that he got a bunch of soup every kind I could want he got it um, but he also brought uh, two boxes of, uh, of cereal um, cinnamon toast crunch two boxes and it he brought home cinnamon toast crunch cake mix I didn't know they made it cinnamon toast crunch icing for the cake mix uh, he brought home cinnamon toast crunch pancake mix I didn't know they made that either uh, he brought home uh, a, a two liter coca-cola and a two liter dr. pepper both full of sugar he didn't get the diet versions no sugar-free um, we're unloading all this stuff. He brought home a can of sweetened condensed milk. He loves it. He will open the can and just eat it with a spoon. And I usually have to take it from him and limit him on that. And uh, I'm, I'm unloading all this stuff. One thing after another, after another, after another. And I pick up one box and everything spills out. Y'all, there's this box of uh, ice cream sandwiches. They're called Fat Boys. I've never had them before, but... We have them now. Fat Boy's ice cream. I said, Johnny, why is this open? He said, I was dying. My blood sugar dropped. I was dying, and it saved me. Y'all, when I saw all this sugar that he bought, I hit the roof. And I was not nice to him. Um, if this had been the first time, I would have been more understanding. But this is many times this has happened. He says, well, it was just my blood sugar dropped. I said, Johnny, you knew to eat lunch. He had skipped lunch. Well, I wasn't hungry. Johnny, you know that with your blood sugar, you have to eat lunch. Even if you're not hungry, eat a bite of something, a handful of peanuts or something, because that'll keep it from plummeting so much. Y'all lost my temper. That's one of my confessions for today, the one I will say to you is yes I got angry and I was not real nice and if you look at him in the video you can tell I've been fussing at him because he's just so he's hanging his head like a little child you know that's a, a kind of humorous one I still got to figure out what to do with all that sugary stuff in the kitchen but we all have things to confess whether it's something humorous like that or something more harmful to others uh, whether it's laziness or gossip or lust or, uh, you know, they say there are seven deadly sins. I think all sin is deadly because it, it uh, takes us away from our Savior. So it does not matter what your sin is. You need to confess it and take ownership and yes we say well God knows all my sins yes he does but he wants you to name them so that you have taken responsibility and you have truly repented for each one of them so now let's say a prayer of confession our Heavenly Father we have sinned I personally have lost my temper I have been lazy I have just been inactive, and that is a sin, too, because we are to be busy for you, Lord. Every one of us has sins. I, I don't know what each person's sin is. You do. They confess them to you, and we ask your forgiveness. I ask your forgiveness, Lord. 
and just ask that your spirit fill me so I can do better when I'm placed in a position that might lead to my sin. I love you and I am sorry for what I have done. Please forgive me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Confession. That's the second thing we have to do. We've done adoration and confession. Now, let's go on. There's a third thing we need to do. This one's a little more fun. Write the letter T. This one is for Thanksgiving. Okay? Thanksgiving. So we're getting on with our list. A-C-T. Thanksgiving. What are we thankful for? Take one minute. Write what you're thankful for. Okay, let's go over a couple of them that I've listed and some that were shared in church. Uh, thankful for heat on cold days and air on hot days. Uh, thankful for plenty of groceries. I have all that sugary stuff I got so much I don't know what to do with it all. Uh, thankful for uh, mercies. I think of the song... Uh, uh, about the mercies that I see every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. That's how the line goes. Um, grateful for hope. Thankful for babies who cry in church. Uh, thankful for church walls. Thankful for life itself. Um, there's a, a church that... Uh, in Douglas, right outside Douglas, that burned down this week, and I watched it, and it made me sick. I don't know anybody that goes to that church, uh, but some of my church members do, and as I watched it, I thought, you know, that could so easily be anybody. It was an accident. The church is a total loss, but this morning, uh, well, yesterday, the church members did a little video and said, look, the church walls have burned the church did not and they met this morning in the rain in the cold and had church outside that burned building they are thankful for each other thankful they got out safely and I am thankful for their witness their strength I am praying for them every day there are so many things to be thankful for uh, thankful for the firefighters that, that saw it, the fact that they got out safely. Thankful for doctors who are treating so many sick people. Y'all, I have a prayer list at, at my churches, and uh, I think I've shown this in other videos, but one of my churches, the entire inside of the bulletin is names of people that are being prayed for every day. This is one little community in Pearson, Georgia. Every little community has this many people and more that need prayer, that need a doctor's touch. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful for them. Thankful for the physicians that are working with all these people and thankful for the people who are praying. So right now, let's give a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, I, I am just thankful. Sometimes we just say, well, I thank you, Lord, for everything. That's not enough. We need to thank you for everything. My heat just cut off. And Lord, I'm so grateful for the fact that I have heat. And I have a warm place at night. A soft bed. So many things I take for granted. I'm thankful for the friends that I take for granted, Lord. The ones who, have, who call and say, hey, how are you doing? Or that the spouse that's willing to go get the can of soup for me. And not just one can, but many so that I can choose whatever I want. I am so thankful for that, Lord. 
I just, I give you praise again for all the good things you do, the relationships we have, the water that flows freely here when so many other countries just struggle just for water to drink. I thank you for the groceries we have, for the faith of that one church. I thank you for your mercies, for your hope and your security. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Here is one more letter we're going to write down. I know this is running long, but bear with me. It's worth it. This last letter is an S for supplication. Supplication. And supplication simply means we are uh, praying for others and praying for ourselves. Prayers of supplication. So let's write down, take one minute again, one, uh, uh, write down several things that you are praying for this week. Okay. All right. Some of the things that I wrote and that were shared by my church members uh, pray for kids who have cancer. There are too many of them, too many kids who are sick. Be in prayer for them. Be in prayer for people who are abused. Be in prayer for our country, for our leaders, for all health care workers. Uh, be in prayer for God's churches, the ones who have walls and the ones who don't. Uh, be in prayer for those in the hospital. And uh, you know specific needs, all those suffering from COVID, from different types of cancer. Uh, people who suffered strokes. Uh, for the cold, people who are out in the cold. Uh, Everything, everybody on this list, on your list, on every church's prayer list, all of them need to be prayed for. And, oh, I skipped a verse. I skipped two verses. Let's go back. Psalm 9-1. I forgot to read this for Thanksgiving. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. You can't give more thanks than that. With all my heart and tell of your wonders. And now for the prayers of supplication, let's look at Philippians. Actually, I'm probably going to close with this in a minute. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Okay. These prayers of supplication. Um, I've listed several that we're in prayer for, and uh, let's go ahead and say our prayer of supplication while we're talking together. Our Heavenly Father, there are many who need us to pray for them, and we need to pray for ourselves. Lord, we lift up all the names on various prayer lists from all of our churches. Lord, we lift up the churches themselves who are struggling, who need to rebuild, who are dying. Churches are in different levels of their, their life. But Lord, they're your churches. And we ask that you be vibrant in them. Lord, I, I lift up those who are searching for jobs. Let them find the jobs that are right. I lift up those who are in the hospital. Ask for your healing in their bodies. Those who are sick at home need your healing touch too. Lord, I lift up caregivers, whether they are health care workers or family caregivers or paid people, give them patience, give our doctors wisdom so that we can continue to, to find our footing. Help all of us through this new way of life. Lord, I 
I just lift up each person. For me, myself, I, I ask for healing for my stomach. I, I just ask for the chance to have lots of laughter with my family. Lord, I ask you all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I could go on for days with prayers of supplication. Uh, we all could. And um, I, I encourage you, I want you to go pray the Lord's Prayer at some point today. But I also want to close with these verses in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Um, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I want you to take this card. We have written the word Acts. If you can look at yours, it'll be the right way. And we've just taken a few minutes to write down some, some prayer needs. Put this somewhere where you will look at it every day. And make this a habit to say the Lord's Prayer every day and go through every step every day. Don't just skip to the bottom like I do a lot of times. Go through all of it because God deserves all of it. He wants to hear all of it. And you get stronger in your faith by praying all of it. Watch this week at how he works on our list. Add things to it. Mark things off as he answers prayers. And let's see how God works. I love you. Call me if you need me. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Reread Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Have a great day.